You are what you eat is only half the equation. What it should actually be is you are what you digest and assimilate. And that's super important when you're considering which is better, animal versus plant protein. Are you ready? Let's get into it. Now, I'm not here to debate the ethics or the sustainability of an animal versus plant-based diet. It's a very complex topic and it really comes down to your individual beliefs and preferences. I'm coming solely from a health perspective, especially when it comes to building muscle, losing body fat, gut health and longevity, particularly for women 30 and beyond. Get your thinking caps on because we're going to do the sciencey bit. Stay with me. You see, the food you eat isn't simply a source of energy. This whole calorie in calories out thing is way too oversimplified and it makes you a bit nutty about the numbers and equations rather than the quality of your food. Whether you eat a banana or steak, the foods you eat are made up of tons of tiny molecules, each with a very specific set of instructions, like a manual for jobs that need doing within the body. So what's the fuss about protein? It's a bit of a buzzword at the moment. Everyone's talking about eating enough, eating too much, Let's cut the bullshit. Simple facts. Protein is needed for nearly every single function within the body. And when you eat a protein-rich food like chicken, your body breaks it down into smaller molecules called amino acids. And each of these amino acids has a very specific set of instructions, like a little manual, for specific jobs within the body, like tissue growth and repair. Basically, so you can build muscle, lose body fat, repair your cells, enzyme production, which is all to do with your metabolism and your digestion, Digestion, hormone synthesis, so your fertility, your sleep, your circadian rhythm, your weight management, immune function, you know, like fighting pathogens, healing, recovery, nutrient absorption, again, metabolism, building muscle, yada yada, and structural support. Think glowing skin, healthy hair, nails, supple joints, that kind of thing. Protein is so much more than just an energy source. If you want to feel well, sleep well, digest well, build muscle, burn fat and feel fabulous, you need to make sure that you are getting enough of this stuff every single day. But remember what I said, quality matters more than just counting calories. So let's discuss that. Complete versus incomplete proteins. So proteins get broken down into what? Pop quiz time. Amino acids, well done. And there are nine of these, and they're essential. Essential because your body can't make them itself, which means you must get them from the foods you eat. Now, animal proteins are complete, meaning they have all of the nine essential amino acids wonderfully compact within them. Plant proteins, or not. They're known as incomplete because usually they are missing one or two of these crucial amino acids. Now in the real world, that means that you have to plan your meals very carefully and make sure that you're combining foods like rice and beans to make sure that you're eating complete proteins. Otherwise, you're gonna run into trouble. Remember, food is instructions for jobs that need to be done in the body. Here's an analogy I like to use. Imagine your body is an Ikea chair. Stay with me. If you don't have all the instructions that come in the pack, i.e. plant proteins, and then there's also a few screws missing, i.e. one of the nine essential amino acids, even if you manage to put the chair together, the more you use it, it will eventually fall apart. What? If you eat chicken or any other animal protein, you know that without thinking, you will get all of the nine essential amino acids that your body needs in order to function properly. Never mind building muscle and losing body fat. This is just to literally stay alive. There's no two ways about it. Plants are inferior. Now it's not impossible, obviously. You can make it work, but if I'm already counting calories and weighing my food and stressing over the numbers and having to do algebra every time I eat, the last thing I want to do is also worry about food combining. My brain hurts. Next, we've got the big three macronutrients. All whole foods have uh, varying proportions of the big three main macronutrients, which are proteins, fats, and carbs. Now, generally speaking, animal protein will come with a dose of healthy fats, and next to no carbs. Whereas plant proteins come with next to no fats, but also a very high amount of carbs. Nuts being the exception to the rule because they are a plant protein that also has high fats. But you get my drift. So let's use a real life example. Chicken breast 
versus lentils. And I'm choosing lentils because it's touted as a high protein option for plant-based eaters, because obviously they don't eat meat. Now in 100 grams of chicken, which looks like this, about the size of your palm, you have a whopping 31 grams of protein, 3.6 grams of fat, and zero carbs. And that's a total of 165 calories. Now in 100 grams of lentils, you have only nine grams of protein, obviously zero fat, but also 20 grams of carbs. And that's at 160. 16 calories. Now straight off the bat, I wouldn't say that lentils are a high protein food. Really, they're a high carb food. Now each one has a place in a healthy diet, so I'm not demonizing either. But when you're trying to build muscle and stay in a healthy caloric range, there's obviously one clear winner. Like I said in the two videos, how to eat in your 40s and how to train in your 40s, protein really is the star of your plate. And you should be aiming to get about 30 to 45 grams per meal sitting every day. So with 100 grams of chicken, you've literally hit that goal with only 165 calories. But for lentils, it's a bit of a different story. So to get the same amount of protein that you would do in this small 100 grams of chicken, you would have to eat 345 grams of lentils in one sitting. And that would be a whopping 400 calories. Yikes. Not to mention, I don't know about you, but I would be fighting for my life if I ate that many lentils in one sitting. But there's something else that we haven't talked about that also throws a spanner in the works. You see, 345 grams of lentils sounds like a lot, but what if I told you that this number is actually wrong and it should be way, 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 way higher? And that's because of something called bioavailability, the most important factor when considering protein. Bioavailability basically refers to how well your body can access and utilize the nutrients from the foods you eat. So let's take it back to protein. If you pick a food at the supermarket and you look at the label on the back of it and you see that it says 20 grams of protein per serve, you would assume then that when you eat that food, you get 20 grams of protein, correct? Uh-uh, think again. The reality is that all that label is showing you is how much total protein there is in that food. It isn't telling you how much your body can actually access and utilize because it's not taking into account the bioavailability of that food. What we care about obviously is making sure that we get enough usable protein every meal sitting because we want to build muscle, lose body fat, improve our body composition and all those amazing things that I mentioned earlier. Now animal proteins have naturally a very high score of bioavailability, usually 95% to 100 and over. That means all of the amino acids present in that food are readily available for your body to use. Very efficient, very optimal. Plant proteins? Not so much. That's because a plant's only defense system is something called anti-nutrients, like tannins and phytates and oxalates and lectins and pectins and the list goes on. These are compounds that mess with your digestion and stop you from being able to absorb the nutrients from your food. Not great. So in contrast, plant bioavailability is much lower on the scale with anything between 51 to about 72% on average. And that's according to the DI IAAS, the Digestible Indispensable Amino Acid Score. Now you can mitigate these negative effects from plant foods by knowing how to prepare and cook them, but that's for another video. Anyways, back to our chicken and lentil example. Now we know that within 100 grams of chicken breast there's 31 grams of protein, and with a bioavailability score of 108%, we know that the body is going to use every single bit of protein within it. In fact, chicken scores so high high because it actually exceeds the amino acid requirements for human nutrition. Okay, at this point it's just showing off. But how do lentils fare? Well, in 100 grams there's only 9 grams of protein, but with a bioavailability score of a measly 49%, only 4.4 grams is actually usable. Well, that's embarrassing. Meaning you would have to eat a whopping 705 grams of lentils in one sitting. I'm scared. Not to mention, this equals 817 calories just in lentils. 
Compared to only 165 in chicken, I know which one I'd be picking. <laughs> and don't, don't even get me started on the 56 grams of fiber in one sitting. I'll pray for you. line is plants obviously have their place in a healthy diet no one's discrediting that but let's not pretend like they can replace animal foods especially when it comes to making sure you're getting enough protein intake if you want to build muscle lose body fat change your body composition especially if you're a woman over 30. look we love fiber but you can't have too much of a good thing and also animal foods tend to come with a healthy dose of fat also which is so important for your hormone health for your brain function for your nervous system a lot of women, especially over 30, don't get enough of this stuff as it is. We've been taught to fear dietary fat. It's really outdated, misguided health advice. It's 2025, let's get with the times, hey? The reality is that most plant-based eaters have to supplement with protein to make sure that they're getting enough on a daily basis. And that should tell you everything you need to know. I advocate for getting your protein from real whole food sources over ultra-processed supplements. When it comes to health, real food wins every time because mother nature knows best. Also, I forgot to mention that there are other factors that affect bioavailability and how much protein you can digest based on your individual health status. If you have autoimmune issues or any sort of digestive issues, that is going to compromise your ability to digest and assimilate all the protein in the foods you eat. So which do you prefer, animal or plant protein? Let me know in the comments below by commenting either animal or plant. And tell me what your favorite protein rich food is. Also, uh, shameless plug, this is my cookbook, the Strong Curves cookbook. If you don't know what to eat, to make sure that you're reaching your muscle building and fat burning capabilities, especially if you're over 30, this cookbook is for you. It's separated into sections. You'll know what to eat pre-workout, post-workout, and even on your rest days. High protein, healthy, simple, and even the family will love. Check the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you very soon in another video. Bye!